Good morning. We are working on AACC, American Association of Christian Counseling. And, and especially we are working on uh, law, laws and ethics on Christian counseling. Well, we're going to start from 1-120-C, uh, application to abortion. Well, abortion itself is a big issue. And that's kind of old issue. And still, it is still a big issue too. And that is pretty complicated. Depends on how, how low, not only Christian, Counseling law or ethics. The all countries have a different, you know, opinions on and regulations and documented laws on abortion. Some countries think the fetus itself is a human. I mean, it has a life. Yes, it has a life. Right? And but some other countries are thinking after you know moms give birth the baby and that is the real life. Then those countries don't take care. I mean they do care the fetus, but they think they can allow abortions. Uh, well, we, we, the United States have, has uh, specific regulations on abortions. I mean, we don't accept abortions except, you know, like the criminals, like the rapes, or the fetus in danger, or mom's uh, danger. Moms are in danger. And there are a few exceptions on abortions, but we basically do not accept abortions. And uh, Christian counselors, we want to just read and think about it. Christian counselors do not condone or advocate for abortion or uh, the abortion related activities of clients, especially when the life of a fetus and or mother are not at risk or in jeopardy. Counselors will consider an informed client of potential adverse uh, consequences, emotional and psychological consequences, including an increased risk of depression, anxiety, and suicidal uh, ideation, as well as alternative means to abortion. Recognizing the client will ultimately be responsible for the decision that is made. As far as it is possible, counselors will continue to serve clients and work compassionately with them throughout the pregnancy, uh, whenever abortion is being considered and or whenever emotional and psychological post-abortion consequences may result from a particular decision. Um, the Counselors can say, can say, um, you can abortion, you can have abortion or you cannot have it. But we are not supposed to do that. But as as Christian counselors, we want to just support the clients to keep or clients' and families uh, to keep the the healthy pregnancy processes and um, just support before they uh, give, give birth or after the give birth. Um, at the same time, when uh, the clients uh, made a decision, make a decision to have abortion, and at the same time, Christian counselors cannot uh, deny uh, or ignore their clients because they, they have uh, abortion. 
so even before and after the abortion, the Christian counselors will want to support their, you know, their clients. So because there are lots, lots of things that are, you know, involved in the abortion issue because they had abortion. They, they think abortion because they are uh, in particular situations like, uh, you know, as I said, mom's head. No one wants to lose mom's life, lives, you know, for their babies before they uh, give birth. Um, so we respect all lives, but um, we, in most cases, we usually keep mother's lives. Um, then uh, the fetus or babies because um, it's not only because moms can you know have one of the babies um, but because we we uh, even though we respect all lives we there are it's hard to say you know there are priorities in, in lives but we um, want to keep mothers' lives, so we uh, Christian counselors want to support the moms and the family's decisions. But without best, without best uh, knowledge and activities and counselings and care in a certain level. Uh, or network by reading networkings, we want to just support the moms to keep their pregnancy and give birth babies as long as there are no risks for both parties. <clears throat> well, abortion is almost the same to, you know, giving birth babies. Uh, the effort-wise, well, there is no labors, but effort-wise and psychological-wise and mental-wise and the relationship-wise, uh, we we want you know their their mom, I mean the moms and families can be in vulnerable situations and especially depression and anxiety. And some and angers in a certain with certain reasons and factors and so we we those parts are Christian councils want to take care because usually after the abortion they are not happy at all and. They usually got depression in a certain level. Even though for saving mom's lives, um, they still have depression because they lost a lot. They lost a lot. And just putting a life in mom's uh, wounds out of out of mom's wounds and let the fetus and babies die and that's that's a very traumatic traumatic um, situations so well all all secular counselors want to support and care uh, the moms in abortion uh, conditions, but the Christian counselors especially value all lives, no matter what you know what kind what kind of laws they have. Uh, we want to just support uh, the moms and fetus and babies because those are all living lives. 
Well, people have uh, prayer and honesty with many reasons because they love each other, because they are married, because you know there was an accident or you know uh, bad situations. But that's what we have. That's what we have. So abortion is a big part, and uh, almost all Christian councils are gonna face to that issue. So we want to just take care of it. Uh, one dash one two zero dash D. Application to separation and divorce. Almost one out of two uh, couples. No. Got separated and divorced. Um, well, there are millions of reasons to do that, and I understand, you know, some separations and divorces too. I don't want to say Christians are not supposed to separate or <clears throat> divorce because uh, there can be many reasons. Millions, and there are lots of you know excuses for that too. <clears throat> so, um, but that is sad. That is sad because they love each other and they <clears throat> they made the oath in front of uh, many people to live together forever, but uh, they. They finally reach on a certain, you know, particular point that they can consider separation or uh, divorce. But what about that? Christian counselors do not directly advocate for or assume the decision for client divorce, but many assist clients in understanding biblical care matters, matters and analyzing and making decisions to separate and or divorce. Recognizing that the decision to divorce always resides uh, with, with the client. <clears throat> Christian counselors working in divorce mediation are careful to communicate that such work is not an endorsement of divorce, but rather a decision to offer an alternative choice to uh, divorceal litigation and its destructive family impact whenever divorce is inevitable. Oh, well, uh, in Japan and in Korea, or not even in Japan and Korea, in many countries, most countries got, you know, couples are separated. Uh, they are leaving each other because after, after they got retired or they raised their kids, you know, to like they, you know, after they send, uh, after they sending their kids to colleges or so. People are separating uh, when they are 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, even 90s. I haven't heard about any case, you know, they, you know, who got divorced or separated at, in hundreds, uh, but it can be happened too because they, you know, as I said, there are millions of reasons to separate and divorce. Um, well, Christian counselors don't support divorce or separations, but they have no rights uh, to, um, you know, say they can't separate or divorce because we only support uh, our clients, but we don't make decisions for our clients because you know, making decisions are all on uh, our clients, not on, our, not on us. So that is very important, even though, you know, Christian counselors want to persuade and 
or push sometimes uh, our clients to keep the marriage or the relationship. But we, we actually are there for supporting them to have and keep the healthy relationships. But, um, but even abortion or marriage or couple uh, relationships, they, the clients, clients make decisions. Okay. So, but then it's sad when they want to separate or, you know, uh, divorce. Uh, counselors who want to figure out what's going on there and how client and how counselors can support those couples to keep their relationship and recover or something like that. Uh, there are lots of marriage enrichment programs. Um, um, marriage marriage enrichment marriage enrichment programs so I so called ME programs a lot of ME programs um, <clears throat> so uh, that those are those are those are work too Man, after the marriage enrichment programs, people, couples can get a uh, closer relationship than before or they can recover their broken relationships or they can literally enrich their uh, relationships. Um, those, those, those are, you know, basically practical so they can uh, practice this and that during the marriage enrichment programs and I used to let that lead I used to lead those programs um, like a couple of communications that is kind of a thing or so on and I love the couple couple communications but when you just work on, when you study uh, communications, uh, yeah, uh, the founder, founder must be Marshall McLuhan, and all, med, all problems come from communications, because we don't understand, uh, you know, what other parties are talking to us. And actually, we don't know how to express why, um, what we are thinking and feeling too. And when we have especially conflicts, we don't know how to argue and fight healthy way. Well, there are healthy ways to argue and fight, uh, but we don't want to apply those things to our situations because I want to win. I want to just break other parties or I, uh, I don't want to let other party win. So it, it's pretty hard, you know. So, in, so communications is kind of a huge thing right now. It, it just started a little, but communication itself has huge academic and practical fields. So, but but as as it says, uh, Christian counselors want to just uh, let uh, clients know the biblical things. Well, we all know the Bible. And we, even though we don't know the Bible, we we pretty sure that Bible doesn't want us to separate, kid or divorce. Cause 
marriage is marriage is started by God. And we are believing that uh, actually we know in Genesis the first book of the Bible, actually the Old Testament, uh, God created Adam a man and he was not looking good for God to for cause to see a man is living alone. So he created Eve Eve a woman as so they can be a couple. So we are believing God God is the God is the first uh, presider of the marriage, you know. And but knowing can we solve our relationship problems and husband and wife problems by learning the Bible? We all know. Even secular people, Buddhist people or any other religious people, they know that they know that Bible doesn't want us to be separated in marriage. We all know it. We, we all can guess it. And we are pretty sure that we know it right. But knowing marriage relationship is important doesn't help us much. Because when we are when we have peaceful relationships with our partners and spouses, we don't have any problem. We all praise Bible teachings. <laughs> and we all accept all those teachings and we even try we even can try all things in the Bible to to enrich our relationships. But what about when we have problems? We forgot all those things. Even though we read those verses in, in orders or explanations or cases in the Bible, we don't accept those as they are. And we make it our own stories. But sometimes we don't want to read those. We just skip those parts because we don't want to practice that. We don't want to practice that. Because if we don't want to practice that, we don't want to hear that anymore. So Christian but so Christian counselors explanations, the biblical teachings for relationships doesn't help much. Doesn't help much. But but that's what Christian counselors want to do, basically. Okay? Because we don't want to break up, you know, our clients' our relationships or make them divorce. Because we deal with families, and whenever people got divorced or separated, those can be, those can impact to couples, both to both parties and at the same time their families and relatives and those uh, those in impact can be huge but people do because for their I don't know for their peace one dash one two zero dash e 
of pertaining to premarital and extramarital sexual behavior. Christian counselors do not condone. Do you think Christians don't have sex before their marriage? Do you think they have to keep their virginity or <clears throat> what do you think? Well, if you are if you are Christians, you're gonna say yes, even though you don't practice it. I don't know if you practice it or not. <clears throat> Even secular people can think Christians are not supposed to have premedical sexual, sexual activities because they are Christians. Well, some people are thinking that it, though, that's ridiculous. Well, let's, let's dig into it. Christian counselors do not condone or advocate for the pursuit of uh, or active involvement in premarital and or extramarital sexual behavior by clients. Acknowledging that sex is part of God's good creation and a gift when confined to one man and one woman within the boundaries of marriage. Counselors uh, may agree to and support the client's desire to work through issues related to sexual behavior, identity, and attractions, but will encourage sexual celibacy or biblically prescribe the sexual behavior while such issues are being addressed. Well, that is pretty conservative, isn't it? Um, I don't know how many Christians can apply those teachings, those biblical teachings to their lives. Um, lots of people are supporting that, but on the other hand, lots of people are thinking that's stupid. And because because how we how that's based on how we see um, sexual activities. Some people are supporting uh, the biblical teachings. Uh, it is um, they they think um, sexual behavior must be kept and must be kept in. Um, official, official relationship like marriage. Even though they are on dating, they are supposed to have you know sexual behaviors because they are not allowed. You know that that's what Bible says. I I don't actually I forgot you know which verses to have. Um, mentioned on those things but <clears throat> um, and those people who are thinking that we want to just keep those activities until we have safe relationships and um, ethical or biblical, theological right relationships but some people who are supporting uh, that sexual, we can have uh, sexual activities before the marriage, uh, extramarital sexual behavior, we don't like it, and even all, all secular uh, people don't support that. Um, no one wants uh, no one wants their wives or husbands to have uh, sexual activities with other people except you. Um, so they don't support that, <clears throat> and I don't support that too. 
But uh, they think premarital sexual behaviors and activities can, can be okay because they think sexual activities is sexual activities are kind of our regular living. I mean, normal living, like uh, going gym or doing. I don't know. So those, those are that. Those are it. So I don't want to just touch that. But but <clears throat> but what do you think? You know, um, when my kids kids are kids were in high school in the United States, they you know they shared their lots of stories from their. Friends, I, I'm not sure my kids had had any sexual activities, because um, I'm afraid to ask them. <laughs> but they sometimes shared that shared their friends' history, stories. So some girls and boys had sex when they were in junior high. And they were very kind of active in high schools. You know, they even do French kisses in front of why they were waiting for their lives. And their parents can see them. Um, so it is, it is very common in the United States and they don't want to say no, but they even the parents want to support their kids to not encourage them to have sex, this, you know, with this word that uh, you know, partners, but um, we only support our kids to have healthy and safe sex sexual activities because we don't want them to get in trouble we don't want our kids to have pregnant um, while they were in middle school or high school because they yeah pretty hard and I a friend of mine his daughter got pregnant um, why she was in college, but so he met with uh, her. I mean, he met his daughter's partner and his his parents, but they all said no responsibilities because she got pregnant because she didn't control the person birth control and my friend got angry but after long and many talking conversations with, um, with, with his daughter and with his families and they decided to give birth to the baby because that's a, that's a lie and he and his wife is raising uh, he's the baby right now, and well, birth control wise, do you think that there is, you know, woman, women had women have all the responsibilities on it? Well. Men, men don't know when, uh, when their partners have periods or something like that, but, but still, why, why women got pregnant? Because they love with, with men, and the baby is, the baby is uh, made by men and women, right? And both parties have to 
take responsibilities only. They can't blame women because they didn't do the birth control right. We, we can't say that. We can't say that, right? Okay. All right. So, um, one dash, next one is one dash one two zero dash F. Application to homosexual, bisexual, and transgender behavior. That's LGBTQs. Um, Christian counselors do not condone or advocate for the pursuit of or active involvement in homosexual, bisexual, or transgender behaviors and lifestyles. That is a huge issue. Even though those people are minorities, they are very minor minorities, but um, that's pretty big social issue right now. Counselors, excuse me, counselors may agree to and support the desire to work through issues of homosexual and transgender identity and affections, but will not describe or reduce human identity and nature to sexual orientation or reference, and will encourage sexual celibacy or biblically prescribed sexual behavior. Why such issues are being addressed? Counselors acknowledge the client's fundamental right to self-determination and further understand that deeply held religious values and beliefs may conflict with the same-sex attraction and or behavior, resulting in anxiety, depression, stress, and inner turmoil. Um, Yes, Christians don't support those activities and don't support um, don't support um, you know, their um, their those related activities too. But but since they are insisting that they have. Uh, different sexual orientation um, and understanding. Um, Christians cannot ignore that or despise that uh, because because we 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 think they can have those kind of um, identities. I mean, we Christians respect their human dignities, even though they have different sexual orientations, and even though they have um, different sexual identities than you know than we have, uh, but but. Christians and even the Bible is saying that that is wrong. And in in the Old Testament um, era, they, I mean, the Bible ordered people to kill them um, by stone. Um, so. Christians, we don't still support them. But we respect those people as human beings. We don't say they are homosexual, they have homosexual, bisexual, transgender activities. We don't think they are not human. They are humans. They are all human, right? So, as human beings, we respect those people, but we don't support their activities. Because we are believing that those activities are distorted, 
and even those uh, sins, um, because they don't, and they are claiming that they have genetic problems, but means the Creator, our God, can make mistakes. We don't, we don't trust them. We don't think like that. That's why we don't support their activities. And we are believing that those activities are wrong and sin. Okay? And that is a pretty hard part too. Uh, but Christian counselors, as Christian counselors, we want to just value their uh, human rights but, and respect, but we, we don't want to persuade them this and that, but um, Sometimes we want to just uh, talk about that deeply with our clients who are involved in homosexual, bisexual, transgender activities and other things or other related things. But um, that's basically the Christian counselors uh, do. 1-0-G, application to Euthanasia, euthanasia and assisted suicide. Christian counselors do not condone or advocate for active, active forms of euthanasia and assisted suicide, but many agree to and support the wish not to prolong life by artificial means, and will often advocate for hospice care a more effective application of medicine and other reasonable means to reduce pain and suffering regarding patients or clients who wish to die. Counselors will not deliver nor advocate for nor support the use of drugs or devices to be utilized for the purpose of ending a client's life. So long as there are no other reasonable methods to alleviate such pain and suffering, the counselor is free to support, advocate for, and, for, and participate in aggressive pain management in according, accordance with sound medical practice. And we be informed, informed the consent of the patient of the patient's authorized, authorized representative. Well, um, I read an article that was news actually um, last year, or well, last last year. A, a, a mom and two daughters traveled to Europe for and had they had a you know, last party before uh, the mom uh, asked the organizer organization or an office to uh, end her life artificially um, because she got kind of certain level of disease or sickness or something like that but, but even she could travel all the way to Europe and even she had party with you know her uh, daughters and with other people there and actually she uh, the mom celebrated in her last moment and then uh, an office you know injected or I think injected something to her uh, to end her life um, and the mom's daughters Watch the dad in front of their mother. It was shocking because some countries allowed uh, euthanasia, uh, euthanasia, and that's um, that's pretty new. That's pretty new. Even. They traveled all the way to there and had a party and something like that. That was kind of shocking to people. Because 
Traditionally, we wanna just try our best to keep uh, human lives longer as long as they can sur survive. But um, but euthanasia is different. That's artificial ending, right? Ending lives artificial. Uh, that's not same to the death penalties, but that's voluntarily uh, they are choosing euthanasia. That's that's kind of it's kind of weird than you. Uh, we Christian counselors don't support that kind of activities because we um, we have a little bit more than more conservative opinions on that, and uh, we basically want to try to save all the lives as much as we can, but we can choose not to apply those kind of artificial I mean when I say artificial activities medical activities to keep our keep our lives uh, you know then that is that is actually doable in our modern medical science. So even, even hospitals can make vegetable people um, to live 1, 2, 10, 20 years. They can put all kind of tubes or injections in a body and they can circulate all things and keep the keep the keep the body can breathe and keep the heart beat by electric stimulation I don't know the, the professional terminologies but they can make it, our hearts beat and they can circulate all the blood and what else? You know, there are many things that they can do. But people can choose to use those kind of artificial stuff, or they can say no. Well, I I I just told my Family is that you know not to apply those things to me to my body when I when I'm when I got vegetables or when I when, when there is no um, hope that I can live healthy or uh, live with dignities as human being. So, but I'm gonna just make my own official will, including living trust that uh, I don't want those kind of artificial life expanding medical things. Because I don't wanna live in the hospital for long with, with, in that kind of situation. I don't know. But I don't want to kill myself or I don't want to have euthanasia. Uh, but by refusing those artificial medical expanding things and equipments and chemicals, I can I can 
um, end my life as natural, natural. And I even as you know, telling my families that I don't don't, don't bury me on top of the mountains or cemeteries because there are lots of dead people buried under the grounds and it's going to be horrible during the night and if you go Rose Hills or public cemetery areas, areas you can see huge grass flower. You use a little tiny, you know, mower, but a huge car which has sharp blades in front of it that is very big because public cemeteries are huge. You know. It's a big, heavy, scary, low mowers. Low mowers are running around here and there, you know, driving on the the gravestones I don't like it <laughs> well for comfort for the time um, my families can have have you know released from their sorrows it takes for a while like three months or more I don't know what they're gonna think, but uh, so I asked my family to have cremation when I die. And just one service, no two, just one service and cremation. Because there, there are kind of little spaces spaces for the last service before right before the cremation in front of the cremation furnace huge furnace um, I used to lend the funeral services um, but some couple of I mean few uh, cremation services in cremation place and uh, so they can have a last service and when they open the curtain they can see the big furnace and they can see so what's going on and so I just asked my families to cremation maybe they can put the on uh, in a on place or they can just spread out in the ocean or whatever and I, uh, and I think that's it because I don't know how often my families can visit me when I got buried. <laughs> I don't know. But at least I don't uh, you support euthanasia and assisted suicide. And, but uh, you want to just think about that. And Christian counselors want to just know and we have that kind of. Um, you know, foundation and uh, depends on what we have, we want to just support our clients no matter what. Um, but um, we can comfort them and we can encourage them to follow the biblical teachings. Uh, one day she wonder is sexual misconduct forbidden? Ah, that's a huge problem. Christian counselors refrain from all forms of sexual misconduct with clients in professional pastor or lay relationships and view such behavior as unethical and forbidden. This includes any kind of sexual exploitation, abuse, deception, manipulation, or assessment to relationships where the sexual involvement is invited and relationships where informed consent uh, presumably exists due to the inherent power imbalance of helping relationships as well as biblical principles related to sexual behavior outside of marriage. Such a, a, a parent consent is considered 
uh, illusory and illegitimate forbidden sexual activities and sections included, but are not limited to. Well, those kind of sexual misconduct are, are, and can be happening in counseling session, in counseling setting. Think about that. Your clients are opening all kinds of things to you, even though they are paying you, they are saying almost everything to you because they don't have anybody to talk about that. And because it's dangerous for their lives. And it's kind of a big shame for them to share the, the, you know, what they have with their friends and families. So they are paying you and they are talking to you almost everything. And you are listening well. You don't judge them. You don't blame them. Right? But you just listen. Oh, oh. And you, you just listen actively. So you, you just you know, try to understand them. Oh, oh my goodness. I understand what you said. I understand what you're feeling. Then your clients feel comfortable and they can depend on you and they can think something different. At the same time, at the same time, counselors are listening to their clients in a private place, like a counseling room, even though you have a CCTV. You are listening to your clients, you feel sorry for your, to your clients, and you feel, you know, emotionally mingled with your clients. Especially if you have clients, you, you, the type you like, and if you want to bring comfort and console those clients, and counselors can think different ways. And they can have problems. And the more wicked cases can be happened to counselors. When counselors are go crazy and stupid and cruel and bad and wicked, they can manipulate their clients by saying this and that. And they can allure their clients and they can control their clients and even they can threat their clients because they know secrets. Even though they have to be confidential, they can dread their clients in you know different ways than they can manipulate and abuse their clients, and that is very serious. Those are happening actually. So before get the counseling licenses, we are supposed to be mature people. And we need to equip our integrity. And we need to be right people. And we need to control our thinking and emotions and we need to be loyal loyal to our clients and those, those um, 
ethical codes are crucial for uh, client, I mean counselors. And it's not limited only to Christian counselors, but pastors and lay leaders and because lots of sexual misconduct are happening in churches. They have the same beliefs, same services, they sing together, they travel together, they know what you know what kind of people are there. Number one, direct sexual touch or conduct. No, don't touch your clients. Do not hug. Don't put your hands on their shoulders, even though they are crying. Do not touch. A seductive sexual speech or non-verbal behavior. You know what, it, what those are, right? A solicitation of sexual or romantic relations. Erotic contract or behavior as a response to the sexual invitation or seductive behavior of clients. Because they do. Unnecessary questioning and or excessive probing into the client's sexual history and practices. If that is not related to their problems and current issue, you don't want to ask them. You don't want to ask them those questions. Inappropriate counsel and disclosure of client's attractiveness, sexual opinions, or sexual humor. Advocacy of the healing, the value of counselor client sexual relations. Uh, secretive sexual communications and anonymous virtual interaction via the internet. The sexting, you know what the sexting is? Sex related texting, right? And, or sexual humor. I mean, what is that? Where are you? Um, uh, I was. Oh yeah, sexy or other sorry, sexy or other electronic and information information means sexual harassment by comments, touch or promises, threats of special action, and sexual misconduct as defined by all applicable laws, ethics, and church organization or practice policies. So don't touch. Don't accept the invite invitation. Do not invite your clients for sexual activities. Okay? Verbally or non verbally. Uh, 1 130 A. Sexual relations with former clients forbidden. You have clients and the case is closed, but you want to meet your clients. In a restaurant or hotel or whatever, that's forbidden. Once you have, once you have clients, those clients are living there as clients forever, even even after the the counseling sessions. Okay, even the end of the counseling sessions, they are still your clients. They can. You don't, they cannot be your partners or friends or whatever. Please keep distance from those people, I mean, those, those clients you have, okay? Christian counselors refrain from all sexual behaviors and all relationships as that defined in 1-130 about with regard to former clients and view such behavior as unethical and forbidden. Furthermore, counselors do not purposely terminate and refer clients or parishioners, even at first contact, in order to pursue sexual or romantic relations, relationships. Okay? 
one look dash one three zero that should be constantly with the marital sexual partners. Christian counselors do not counsel with current or former sexual or and or marital partners that will make an appropriate ref referral. So you don't want to counsel, you don't want to just provide counseling service to your ex-wife, to your ex-husband. You want to just refer them to your your friends, your you know the colleagues. Just send them to other counseling centers. Because you're gonna have a problem from the counseling sessions. Okay? You're gonna in trouble and they're gonna in trouble. And you can ruin their uh, current relationships with other people, other partners, and at the same time you're gonna ruin uh, you can ruin your uh, families and uh, the relationship with your partners. So don't even try that, just refer that. One that's one three zero that's a see marriage with former clients, patients. Since marriage is deemed to be honorable before God, Christian councils may consider marriage with a former client thought Though it is not advisable in most circumstances, so long as the following parameters are met. 1. Counseling relations were properly terminated and not for the pursuit of a personal marriage or romantic relationship. So, don't... Because you, you have clients, they have clients forever, so you don't want to meet them out of the, the counseling centers and offices and you don't want to just meet them, you don't want to just love them or do, you don't want to do sexual activities with them, you don't want to get married with them. Okay, that's clear, right? And number two, the client is fully informed that any further counseling must be done by another. Three, there is no harm or exploitation of the client or the client's family as a result of a different relationship with the counselor. And the marriage takes place no less than three years after the termination of a counseling or helping relationship. Okay, so those are things uh, we want to just talk about. So we want to just resume that kind of cause uh, next week. Isn't it, isn't it interesting to see and, and read and think about those cause, uh, those uh, official, official and former uh, ethic uh, guidance. So those are very detailed and practical cause. So you want to just read it carefully and keep those in your mind so we, we can avoid all kinds of discomfort, um, troubles, and problems. And as Christian counselors, we don't want to make sins against God um, and against our clients because we got clients for providing counseling services, not or not to take advantage of them or uh, or um, manipulated by our clients. So we have to keep our distance right so we can have our counseling environment happy and right and biblical. So knowing and understanding those causes is quite important and and we want to just practice those accordingly. Okay? We want to reason that uh, and we'll see.